into youth participation in the productive sectors of our economy and other key issues that impede their participation in that sector. As the neck of inches ever closer, the Canopy Municipality has set up a 50-man committee to work out the modalities needed for their success and that of the week-long event as a whole. Farmer of Opana, GRCS. The decision by President Mohamed Mousi of Egypt to assume sweeping powers and sack his country's top prosecutor has sparked sparked violent clashes between his supporters and those against him. An opposition activist in the Democratic Republic of Congo says President Joseph Kabila must relinquish power as the rebel offensive in Eastern DRC gains momentum. We'll be back with these and other stories when we return. Internet service at the lowest price ever. 3G AfriCell brings you the most affordable 3G internet bundles ever. ever, ever. Get your AfriCell Extreme 3G internet service for as low as $15 is only. AfriCell 3G bundles starting from 50 megabytes up to 12 gigabytes. 12 gigabyte bundle for a tariff as low as five bucks per megabyte. And all bundles are valid for 30 days. AfriCell Extreme 3G service for as low as $15. To subscribe, please dial 120 and choose from the available 3G bundles. For more info, call 113. AfriCell Extreme 3G service. For as low as five bundles per megabyte, stay connected to AfriCell's 3G network. AfriCell. When we say Extreme 3G, it is truly extreme. Welcome back to the news. Violent clashes have erupted in Egypt after the assumption of sweeping powers by President Mohamed Morsi on Thursday. The clashes between pro and anti Morsi factions followed the sacking of the country's prosecutor general by the president. This latest move by the Egyptian leader has, pro has prompted the opposition activists to say that the courts have lost their independence. Details in this report. Strengthened by the ceasefire he helped obtain in Gaza, Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi assumed sweeping powers on Thursday in the name of defending the revolution. The government spokesman made a surprise announcement on television. From now on, he said courts have no right to challenge his decrees or dissolve the Constituent Assembly until a constitution is agreed. Mohamed Morsi also decided to sack the prosecutor general named by the old regime and within minutes of the announcement appointed a new one. The general prosecutor will be appointed from members of the judicial authority by the president for a period of four years. No judicial authority is allowed to dissolve the Shura Council, the constituent assembly, which is drafting the constitution. Liberal opposition forces immediately held a protest rally Thursday evening in Cairo. They accused President Morsi of doing away with the independence of the courts, the last check on his powers after the dissolution of parliament. He made these decisions today so he could remove the general prosecutor and appoint a brotherhood prosecutor in his place. Right now he has been able to destroy the judicial authority, the army, he has taken over the police force and given them a green light to do as they wish in the street. Morsi's supporters, too, took to the streets of Cairo to back the president, and according to public television, violent clashes took place on Friday in Suez, Ismailia, and Port Said. Well, President Joseph Kabila has sent his army chief parking following the capture of the city of Goma by M23 rebels. Kabila's decision to sack his top military commander is not stopping the rebels from advancing into the strategic cities like Saik. And as we hear in this report, some 120,000 citizens of the DR Congo are fleeing the violence in the east of their country. Since rebels seized Goma three days ago, life has slowly returned to the city. Businesses have reopened under the eyes of patrolling rebels. We can't stay barricaded in our houses any longer. We have to get back to work. Life goes on. Even though it was a bitter pill to swallow, we swallowed it. 20 kilometers outside of Goma, the fighting continues. M23 rebels, supported by Mai Mai militias, are battling for control of sake, the next step before the assault on Bakabu, the capital of South Kivu. Residents are fleeing the area. 120,000 people have been displaced. 
NGOs say the situation is urgent. The rebels have refused to pull back until Kinshasa agrees to negotiate. The government says that the door is open. The demands made by the M23 mutineers will first be studied by different parties before a decision is made about holding talks. Although the finger has been pointed at Rwanda and Uganda for aiding the rebels, the government itself has come under scrutiny after the United Nations accused the Army's Chief of Staff, General Gabriel Amisi, himself a former rebel, of selling arms to poachers and militias. There are now calls that all officers in Goma and the CNDP be sacked. Opposition parties hold President Joseph Kabila responsible for the scandal. He has disorganized the entire army. Today, part of the country is still beyond government control, all because of his stubborn insistence on holding on to power illegitimately. How far will the rebels go, and how should the government respond? Leaders will address those questions tomorrow at an emergency summit in Uganda. Well, hundreds of Islamist rebels have clashed with the PKK fighters along the Turkish-Syria border. The Syrian Kurds have decided to unify against the Islamists who are fighting alongside the new Syrian army. And the border crossing between Egypt and the Gaza Strip was reopened on Thursday in the wake of the truce between Israel and Hamas. We have details of those and other stories in this World News Roundup by CFI. Thursday in Syria along the Turkish border, hundreds of Islamist rebels clashed with the Syrian branch of the PKK, the Kurdish Workers' Party. The fighting has been intense for several days, and the Syrian Kurds have decided to unify their forces against the Islamist. The Islamists are fighting alongside the Free Syrian Army and accuse the Syrian Kurds of playing into the hands of Assad's regime. Fearing the conflict could spill over into Turkey, Ankara has asked its NATO allies to deploy surface-to-air Patriot missiles to protect its borders but Russia has opposed the plan. The ceasefire between Israel and Hamas held on Thursday after a week of deadly fighting. 163 Palestinians and six Israelis were killed in the conflict. In a sign that things were returning to normal, the Rafah border crossing between Egypt and the Gaza Strip was reopened on Thursday. The European summit in Brussels on the 2014-2020 budget looked headed for failure on Friday. As Europe is facing a financial crisis, many countries are looking out for their own interest. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said she did not expect officials to reach a deal at the summit. French President Francois Hollande was also skeptical. He met with British Prime Minister David Cameron for negotiations. European heads of state are now expected to examine a new project laid out by the president of the European Council. Joaquim Barbosa became the first ever black head of the Supreme Court in Brazil on Thursday. 58-year-old Joaquim Barbosa took oath in a ceremony attended by President Dilma Rousseff. In a speech, Barbosa said it was unfortunate that not all Brazilians were treated the same. Since August, Barbosa has been heading the largest anti-corruption case in Brazil's history. He found three top aides to former President Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva guilty. Let's now take a look at sports English Premier League champions, Manchester City and Kings of Europe, Chelsea, will battle it out this Sunday in what promises to be a mouth-watering encounter. The contest will be the first game for the new Chelsea boss, Rafa Benitez, who must do a lot to win over Chelsea fans. Let's turn to this analysis for more on that. <laughs> Us, is it? We no. said he didn't really have a chance to get his feet uh, under the desk and settle in yesterday. Just the, the, the Premier League champions and the Premier League leaders to contend with. He's got problems on the pitch. He's got players who are upset that Di Matteo left at the start of the week to contend with. He's got the injuries to, to John Terry. Frank Lampard's still very much in doubt. And, and this is a, a Chelsea team without a win in the Premier League in four, without a clean sheet in seven. But as well as the problems on the pitch, Benitez has got the 
problems to contend with off the pitch in terms of a lot of fans, people talking about protests and banners saying they really don't want him in charge of their club. He's saying he hopes he's going to win them round, but that will very much depend what happens on the pitch. But Mancini, for his part, saying, actually, you know what, it's probably City who are going to suffer the most out of